Hey guys, Ed Budd here, and welcome back to the channel. If you haven't been here before, and you've just landed here, thanks for joining us. Today I'm going to give you a race recap from the Char Chaser 10k that occurred on Sunday, and also I'm going to talk a little bit about the tapered week for the Salisbury Half Marathon coming up this weekend. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button in the bottom corner here. It would mean a lot to me. There's lots and lots of new viewers, new subscribers recently. I very much appreciate it. This channel specializes in shoe and running gear reviews, typically, and I also look at some local races and also cover events occurring with the Yeovil Town Road Running Club. So the penultimate training week before my taper saw me having a go at the Chard Chaser 10K. It's a nearby town in Somerset, pretty close by, so it was an ideal workout really over that 10K distance. Conditions were very variable when I got up first thing in the morning, got up about seven o'clock, had some porridge, that typical sort of stuff really that people say is great for race day. Seemed to work out okay for me today. Weather really variable. I arrived nearby to the race, which was held at a local fitness centre, and there was very high humidity. I think it was somewhere in the region of about 90%, I think. And there was some light rain. So the temperature was around about 15 degrees when I completed my kind of one mile warm up. What I didn't realise was the area I used my warm up was the last half mile section of the course. So when I did come up to that later on in the race, I kind of felt at home, I knew where I was. More luck than judgment that one though, really. There was about seven members of the Oval Town Road Running Club having a go at the race today, and I think there was probably over a hundred or so braving the conditions. I have to say that the course was an awful lot tougher than I thought it was going to be. The start hit off on a road section, which was absolutely fine, and then went into a very, very narrow path, which seemed to be made up of kind of rocks and concrete and mud. Not ideal conditions really. It was very muddy, it was very uneven, and there was one point I was thinking to myself, I'm kind of really worried about this, I'm gonna tear my ankle, I'm gonna slip over. It was quite a tough start to the course. I managed to negotiate that section, got into a slightly better rhythm. Clocked about six minutes 38 for the second mile. The third mile saw quite a steep hill climb of around about 200 foot, and then a very quick descent of about the same distance. There was no time to recover after that. There was then another steep hill uh, ascent of about 150 foot. I think that was about three and a half miles in. And I think the ascent was about half a mile in distance. It was tough stuff. I tried to use the power of Billy Ocean, but I did feel a bit of a twinge in the right glute at this point, And I decided to ease off on that second hill. Didn't want to take any chances. I think the guy just behind me sort of called out, you know, are you okay, buddy? I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm just I'm not taking any chances on this one. Mile four for me then was about getting back on track, really getting the rhythm going again. I hit about seven minutes, eight seconds per mile. So starting to get back to the speed I wanted to achieve. Then I made up some lost time in mile five, about six minutes, 34. There was a really nice descent after that second big hill which was really welcome. The glutes were really saying, please, please give me some downhill here. Help me out. And it was really welcome to see that descent. There was a quick kind of double back section, which confused a few of the runners. There was a lady running a little way behind me and she said, what's going on? Cause she saw me coming back towards her and she soon figured out that there was a very quick turnaround there. I uh, lost a little bit of pace there, but managed to come through the finish line in 11th position. So, Fairly happy with that considering the greater elevation that I really wasn't too aware of. I saw there were a couple of hills when I first looked at doing the course, but certainly a lot tougher than I first envisaged. So average pace about seven minutes, 10 seconds per mile. So certainly not the fastest 10K I'm ever gonna do, but given that there was some quite rough conditions, there were lots of sections where I had to pull the pace back a little bit really um, to avoid injury or slipping over. Plus, there were those hills there. They were tough. I kind of realized what they always say about that phrase, the end of the day. At the end of the day, I was actually really pleased with my performance in the race. Came in just under 45 minutes. So a good tester, really got the legs working, and I managed to hit some quite fast speeds, higher than that half marathon target pace over a couple of the miles within the course. You know me guys, you know, elevation. I'm up tall enough. I've got enough elevation just from walking around. I like those flat road courses, you know, I really do like those, but I'm starting to enjoy the hills, you know, I did I did enjoy that first hill. I have to be honest, I am starting to like the challenge. 
You know, I was playing Billy Ocean there around in my head. When the going gets tough, Ed Bud did actually slow down a little bit on that second hill. Got to say, I love all my club colleague members. Fantastic performances from them today. There were some tough conditions. There was wind, there was rain, rain coming into my eyes, there was mud. It was tough. Really proud of the other Yeveltown Roadrunners today. Some really great finishes there. People, people putting in a real shift. I'm glad I had the old Nike Tailwind hat today. It really did keep the rain out of my eyes a little bit. There's one point it was coming straight at me, really. Um, so I'm glad I had that. It did make my progress a little bit easier. Really great medal for this one. It's got a little plane on it. And the reason being that Chard was actually the site of the first powered flight by John Stringfellow back in 1848. They make quite a big thing out of it in the town. Actually, as you come through, there's some big signs with a plane and stuff like that. So cool medal. So tapering this week, all the miles come down a little bit, a little bit more achievable, resting up quite a lot more, making sure I keep that nutrition good. The legs are really rejoicing at this point, guys. I've got to be honest. Tired, tired legs at the end of that 10K. Three easy miles today. I whacked on the old Pegasus 35 turbos. I really wanted something nice and soft just to kind of hug those feet a little bit, to give them a big hug. Again, weather was horrible. It was horrible out there, I've got to be honest. It was raining, it was windy. It was not the sort of day that you see many runners out. There are only a couple of people out on the old trail back there. There was one guy, I'm pretty sure it's the guy that I powered ahead of in the Martok 10K earlier this year. He kind of took me near the end and I thought, I'm not having any of that. I'm pretty sure I passed him. He didn't look too pleased to see me. I tried to wave at him and give him a thumbs up, but Maybe he didn't recognise me. That's probably what it was. So. so last speed session on Tuesday is going to be 8 by 400 metres with some 200 metre recoveries. Those 400 metre bursts are going to be at the 5k pace. So the very last one, I keep saying to the legs, you've just got one more speed workout to do and then you're all good. Still feeling a little sore from the efforts on Sunday. The right glutes are still a little bit tight. It's okay. You know, on those three miles, it loosened up. It was fine. So I don't think there's any lasting damage there. Just pushed it pretty hard. On the Wednesday, it'll be four miles at steady pace of seven minutes, 30 seconds per mile. So it's kind of halving the miles, really, from what I was doing last week. And then Thursday, it'll be four miles with six 150 meter strides thrown in. Those little bursts of speed up, get the form good. And so we're all ready for Sunday. Rest day Friday, I'm gonna have a pizza. You just try and stop me. I'm gonna be on the phone for a nice pizza. Onions, olives, peppers. Yeah, that sounds good. Three easy miles Saturday just to keep the legs turning over. Turning over. So looking forward to heading over to Salisbury. It's been a while since I've been there. The Salisbury half marathon course is almost completely flat. It's almost completely devoid of any elevation. So a quick look at the weather shows that we're in for about 15 degrees, which is exactly what I had on Sunday. It's looking like there could be some rain before the race, but no rain during it. So I'm expecting there to be some wet conditions on the ground, on the pavement, on that road surface. The terrain is almost all on road. I don't think the roads are shut, but it's almost all on road. So I'm not too worried about shoe selection in terms of traction, but shoe selection is still a bit of a question. So after using the next percent for the Charge Chaser 10K, I still feel that perhaps I get a little bit more propulsion from the Vaporfly 4% Flyknit. Don't get me wrong, I really love this shoe. It was a real pleasure to run in it. I think I've got the sock selection right. I enjoyed the thinner Nike racing socks with these. Much better, much better fit, just felt Great, I didn't really think about the shoe at all while I was running. But in the past, I've had some issues using the 4% on wet roads. I did find them a little bit slippery at times. As I say, the fit was great with the next percent with the thinner Nike socks. So should I go with those? Wet conditions don't suit the Flyknit material either. It does tend to kind of stick to that mesh. It kind of retains that moisture and that water a little bit more. Vapor weave's supposed to be fantastic. It's been designed to sort of not hang on to that water, to expel it, to let it go. So is this the time to use the next percent? I've got to say, I was really impressed with the traction achieved in the recent race with this rubber section here. Seems to have roughed up a little bit now. And it was nice and grippy. Certainly going on those downhill sections, I really felt like I had some decent grip. In fairness, they're still looking pretty good. I did hear some dreadful noises, like I'd stepped on some thorns or some sharp rocks at one point, but there's no 
damage to the bottom of the shoes at all. Certainly on the exposed Zoom X and the rubber sections just look barely used. In terms of race nutrition, there's only one thing I'm going to use. It's the Morton Gel 100s. Tried and tested in past half marathon efforts for me, so I'm just sticking to my normal plan. I have a ridiculously high metabolism. Um, I tend to eat quite a lot during the day. I tend to crash out if I don't get enough to eat. I just become a sort of irritable so-and-so. So certainly in terms of where I'm going to use gels, I'm probably going to have one a little bit before the start of the race. And then going by past half marathon efforts, I think I need to use them a little earlier than I have done in the past. Last half marathon effort, used one around about five miles and then 10 miles. I think I'm gonna pull that forward a little bit, around to about maybe 4.5 miles and then nine miles. I think that will give it time to at least get into my system and give me a little bit of a boost towards the end when I'm gonna need it. That side, this race really isn't about shoes, it's not about gels, it's about pacing. Making sure that I don't go out too fast, I don't fly out of the blocks. I've got to stick closely to that target pace and be sensible over the distance, not get too excited. The training over the last few months has proved to me that I can increase that top level speed, but it's also given me consistency over the increasing miles. Obviously, it's a little bit about how I feel on the day. Will I have the consistency to produce that kind of level across the 13.1 miles. We'll soon find out. Will those wet conditions hinder my pace? Will I fade out around 10 miles as so often people do? I'm gonna try and place as little pressure on myself as I can. But that's really easy to say, but hard to do. Either way, I really do think it's a great opportunity to set a new PR over that half marathon distance if I remain calm. No hills to contend with, a nice flat straight course, bring it on. Right, that's very much all for me for today, guys. Please hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Comment below and tell me about how you've been getting on with your training for events that you may have coming up. Please share this video with other runners. My name's Ed Budd and I'll be seeing you.